Hello everyone, this is Desert Qualities and welcome to my Smite Law series. In this episode, I will be going into the actual history and mythology behind the Egyptian goddess Neith. Let's start with the basics. Neith was the goddess of war, hunting and of weaving. Her symbol is two arrows crossed over a shield, sometimes also seen holding a harpoon. As the goddess of war, she was said to make weapons for warriors and to guard their bodies when they died. According to some, Neith was creator of the world and mother of the sun. This also made her the mother of all the gods. One creation myth suggested that she created the world by weaving. As the goddess of creation and weaving, she was said to reweave the world on her loom daily. She was considered to be the eldest of the gods. She is said to have been born the first in a time when there had been no birth before. Neith's symbol and part of her hieroglyph looked like a loom, which is a device used to weave cloth. So when Greece started to get more involved with the Egyptian ruling class, Neith also became a goddess of weaving. Because of this, she can be associated with Athena who also did weaving, some believing they are actually the same goddess. Neith was a powerful and popular deity who the other gods consulted when they needed help settling a dispute. According to myths, it was Neith who decided that Horus would be king of Upper and Lower Egypt instead of Set. Instead, she gave Set land and blessed his wedding with two foreign goddesses. After deciding that Horus would be king, in her reply she says that she will cause the sky to crash to the earth if he is not selected. She had a festival that was celebrated on the 13th day of the third month of summer each year and was known as the Festival of the Lamps. People arrived from all over Egypt to pay their respects to the goddess and to offer her gifts. At night they would light lamps which burned all night and even those who did not attend the festival lighted such lamps in their homes. The same was done in temples and palaces. The whole of Egypt would be illuminated all night long. These lamps were thought to mirror the stars in the night sky which were claimed to be either deities or paths to those deities. At the festival the veil between earth and the land of the dead was thought to part and people could see and speak with their departed friends and family members. She was connected to funeral rites because she was responsible for weaving the mummy wrappings. Since Neith was also a goddess of war, she had additional association with death. It is said that she shot her arrows into the enemies of the dead and therefore she began to be viewed as a protector of the dead, often appearing as a snake to drive off intruders who would harm the dead. When it comes to Neith's family, it can get a bit weird and complicated. Sometimes she was pictured as a woman nursing a baby crocodile and was given the title Nurse of Crocodiles, which reflects her being either the mother of the crocodile god Sobek or his wife. She can also be known as the Celestial Cow and in this form was the mother of the sun god Ra and can be described as the great cow who gave birth to Ra. Later no deity is consistently identified with her as being her husband and she is often represented without one. Neith is able to give birth without a partner, because of this some believe her to be both male and female. Some depictions of Neith even show her with a penis. Now let's go into a small comparison between the real life Neith and the one in game. To start, the in game lore for Neith, it says that she was born from the primordial force of water, which according to some stories of Neith is accurate. This does also imply that she was the first deity which fits with real life. They do briefly mention how she weaves shrouds to shield the lost spirits of the dead on their journey to the underworld. This part is of course true, as I mentioned earlier, Neith does weave the mummy wrappings for the dead. When it comes to being goddess of war, Smite does mention the war of the gods that is happening in game, and it says she must once again pick up her bow and hunt. I feel like this is more making her sound like the goddess of the hunt, which in mythology Neith was the goddess of the hunt. This is also the closest in-game they come to connecting her to being the goddess of war, which I feel like the focus was more on the hunt here. In terms of combat, in mythology she is said to have fired arrows and in-game she does of course use a bow, so they have kept to that. Overall I would say Smite has mostly kept to the truth with Neith, it's more they have left out some major parts, but they have covered the basics. Thank you everyone for watching episode 1 of my Smite Law series. If you enjoyed watching, remember to subscribe and to like the video. I also stream on Twitch if you wanted to watch me play live. Links will be below.